You're walking through the Australian outback, and you hear footsteps behind you. Heavy ones. Too heavy for a dingo, too slow for a kangaroo. And before your brain even decides what to do, you already know the truth. If this were 40,000 years ago, something much bigger could have been standing behind you. A lizard longer than a car, heavier than a lion, with the attitude of a Komodo dragon on an empty stomach. And the wild thing is, that kind of giant really did roam Australia. Komodo dragons were part of this continent too, long before humans ever showed up. So the question today is pretty simple. If they returned, could they ever evolve into something like Megalania again? Today, few things would send a shiver down the spine more than coming face to face with the world's largest lizard, the Komodo dragon. With its razor-sharp, serrated teeth designed to rip flesh from bone, its powerful whip-like tail and venomous bite causing rapid internal bleeding, paralysis, shock, and death, it is a formidable predator. Restricted to the Indonesian islands of Komodo, Rinka, Flores, Gili Dasami, and Gili Motang, these giant lizards grow up to 3 meters, 10 feet long, and weigh up to 150 kilograms or 330 pounds. They can live up to 30 years, only needing to feed once a month, and it seems nothing is safe from them. Even the young climb trees to escape predation from the adults, which can run up to 12 miles per hour, launching a rapid attack on any potential prey. They can stand on their hind legs to reach high up into the branches and are so powerful they can knock down trees. Their feeding habits could be considered quite vile by some. They can detect a dead animal from almost six miles away, using their forked tongue like a snake to taste particles in the air, guiding them to the fallen victim. With it flicking in and out of the mouth, the Komodo dragon will home in on its meal. Often, others will do the same, all congregating at the carcass. But it's not just carrion they feed on. They also stalk live prey, such as wild pigs, deer, and buffalo. They are ambush predators, waiting for the opportune moment to strike. Then, they launch their attack. Most prey die within seconds from massive blood loss, and large chunks of flesh are ripped from the bones and gulped down. Some smaller prey, like goats, are swallowed whole. Sometimes the dragons will ram the goat carcass into a tree trunk to try and shove it down their throat faster. But with their mouth so full, they risk suffocation whilst swallowing an entire goat, which can take up to 15 minutes to swallow. But the dragons can breathe through a small tube under their tongue. However, consuming their body weight in food in one sitting can have severe consequences. Because the Komodo dragon's metabolism is so slow, they must find a sunny spot to lie in after eating a meal to speed up digestion before it rots inside them. They then regurgitate a mucousy mix of horns, hair, and teeth. Observing these beasts in the wild feels like a step back in time. They seem prehistoric, almost dinosaur-like and their lethal capabilities are intimidating for even the bravest individuals. But what if there was a lizard on Earth that was bigger than the Komodo dragon? Much bigger. While the lives of Komodo dragons are both fascinating and slightly terrifying, they are nothing compared to the extinct Megalania. Now this lizard, which lived in Australia during the Pleistocene, could have dwarfed the Komodo dragons. In fact, there's a possibility that the two species would have walked side by side, because Komodo dragons once inhabited Australia during the Pleistocene too. As the name suggests, scientists first thought that these prehistoric lizards were huge. But with few fossilized skeletons to go on, size estimates for the Megalania vary wildly, from just 2 or 3 meters long, the same as today's Komodos, to a massive 7 meters. Now in all likelihood, they would have been somewhere in the middle. Australia's landscape during the Pleistocene was filled with a vast array of interesting megafauna. The giant wombat-like diprotodon, the marsupial lion, the large rhinoceros-sized marsupial known as the marsupial tapir, man-sized birds, and the giant short-faced kangaroo. So, Megalania wasn't alone when it came to size on the Australian continent. What was Australia like during the time of Megalania? It was characterized by colder, drier, and windier conditions than today, with vast expanses of grasslands and deserts. There were repeated cycles of cold, dry icehouse phases and warmer, wetter greenhouse phases. The species living there had to adapt to the varying conditions, and Megalania was no exception. 
To fill their huge stomachs, Megalania would have fed on medium to large animals, which were common at the time. It is believed that they also possessed the venom glands of other monitor lizards. Their feeding behavior and hunting techniques would have been the same as those observed in Komodo dragons, and watching a hunt in action would have been an impressive sight. There were many large animals during the Pleistocene. In other parts of the world, mammoths, mastodons, giant ground sloths, and direwolves occupied the landscape. In Australia, there were fewer predators and less competition for Megalania, which enabled it to grow to an enormous size. Although the marsupial lion is considered to have been a successful apex predator, along with the terrestrial crocodile Quincana, Megalania also grew to great lengths to take advantage of the large herbivores on the island. Where the large mammalian predators dominated ecosystems elsewhere, in Australia that niche was filled by Megalania. With a much slower metabolism than any of Australia's mammals, Megalania was more energy efficient and could still thrive during food scarcity, something the large mammals would have struggled to do. Its fossils are relatively rare compared to those of the marsupial lion, but it appeared to be a successful part of the Australian Pleistocene megafauna. Until humans arrived, that is. Just like many of the other species present at the time, humans soon drove Megalania to extinction both directly through hunting and killing them, and indirectly through competition for land, food, and habitat. There's evidence in cave paintings and prehistoric artwork that early Aboriginal Australians came across Megalania. It likely inspired their mysterious and terrifying tales of the Wowie, a seven-meter-long goanna with a huge frog-shaped head and six powerful legs. As legend goes, the Wowie, who lived in a cave on the banks of the Murray River, could devour an entire tribe in one meal. Although it's now extinct, the legend of the Megalania lives on. Some conservationists are calling for Komodo dragons to be released into Australia. Their argument for this idea is to control the feral pig population and keep pest species down. There is no doubt that Komodo dragons would do that, but it has been a very long time since Komodo dragons inhabited Australia, and the ecosystem today is vastly different from how it was during the Pleistocene. Introducing an apex predator like the dragons could have a knock-on effect throughout the food web, and it wouldn't necessarily be a good one. As the modern species have not evolved in the presence of these predators, they would be at serious risk. The beloved marsupials of Australia could be decimated if Komodo dragons were reintroduced there. Livestock would no longer be safe. Endangered species found nowhere else on Earth could become extinct, not to mention the dangers they pose to people. Their existence on isolated Indonesian islands with few or no people have enabled them to exist within the ecosystem for thousands of years. But Australia is not the same as those islands. If they were brought back to Australia, could they evolve back into Megalania? Technically, no, because they are not a direct descendant of Megalania, but they are closely related and share a common ancestor. But they have the genetic toolkit to evolve into a new species of giant lizard. But that doesn't necessarily mean it would happen. Even if they were left in Australia for hundreds of thousands of years, there likely wouldn't be the same ecological pressures that there were during the Pleistocene. It was these pressures, or lack of them, that drove them to become big. These included very low competition from other large predators, an abundance of very large prey, the megafauna, and a stable, warm climate. Today, there are no large prey species in Australia that would favor large body sizes for predators. There are highly successful predators already dominating the landscape, mostly humans and dingoes, so there would be fierce competition. Additionally, human interference wouldn't allow the natural selection required to permit a new species to evolve. The larger animals are always the first to go when humans arrive. They compete for space, food and resources, or hunt and kill them. Smaller species are able to hide better, can usually adapt to a variety of niches, and are less sought after by humans during hunts. So, if there were any natural ecological pressures driving Komodo dragons to increase their body size to Megalania proportions, humans would put a stop to it before it had even begun. It's not to say that Komodo dragons couldn't evolve into Megalania-like lizards in the future, just not under the conditions currently in Australia. Komodo dragons may be the closest living echo of the time when giant lizards walked the earth, but Megalania is gone. But. If the world ever again gave nature the space to dream as big as it once did, maybe, just maybe, a giant would rise again. That's all for today. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.